What's going on guys? I'm back to Season 5 NHL 24 Minnesota Wild Franchise Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for supporting the last episode. If you can leave a thumbs up on this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. As you can see, we're currently 4-2 and two in the preseason. Quinn Hughes there has 9 points in 6 games. Obviously, trading for him when his contract expiring was a big move we made. Hopefully, it pays off for us here. Usually, it does sim quite well. Now, in terms of the awards, last year, the Buffalo Sabres there won the Stanley Cup. We made it to the second round of the playoffs. The first two years, we missed the playoffs, which we wanted to rebuilding. Third year, we knocked out round one. Fourth year, we knocked out round two. I'm hoping this year, we can at least make the conference final. Also, too, last episode, I asked you guys about the captaincy. Who should we give the C to? And I feel like the overwhelming majority of you wanted it to be Brock Favors. So, no longer see Rain in A. He is now the captain of the Minnesota Wild. Please have Eric's neck. There were still Rain A's. Hopefully, most of you guys are happy with that. Now, looking at the team, no reason why we can't go on a cup run. I think we are pretty stacked here, top to bottom. You got Kaprizov, Rossi, Boldy on that first line and a plus five. Now, Kaprizov has definitely been underperforming uh, these last couple seasons, even, you know, honestly, the entire series. Hasn't had a point per game season yet. Hopefully, this is the year. Second line, you got Cousin Dinov there. Hagen's down in the NHL. Lekromack, you get a plus four. Lekromack, he's actually got the best shot on the team. Five stars there. Third line, you got Demidov, Eriksenek, Eiserman. Eiserman as well, making the jump to the NHL. Fourth line, you got Ogren, Oslin, Yurov, I think very solid. Defensively here, of course. Hughes and Faber is nasty. Even the second pairing, you got Hudson, Chicker, and that could be a top pair on a lot of teams. And then Schaefer, Willander there on the bottom pair is quite solid. Like Schaefer out of nowhere grew from like a 79 to an 85 this summer. So he's playing bottom pair for now. Might take over for Chikrin's role, you know, this summer if we do need the money. But Chikrin's going to be on our top PK and stuff. So we'll see. I think that defense is about as good a defense you can get. We got really lucky with the cap because obviously a bunch of guys on entry levels. Wallstead's our starter. Daigle backing him up. Kind of ridiculous to have that good a goaltending, but you know, the fact Daigle is on entry level as well. Might as well. Looking at power play one here, you guys can see it's getting a plus five. Feel like it should be solid. Uh, power play two here as well, plus two. A lot of the, you know, young guys. I don't think anyone on this power play is over like 25 years old. Four man power play one plus four. The second one there is a zero. PK wise, you get plus five in the first. Ericsson, Bully, Chicken, and Faber. I think actually the entire PKs are positive chemistry except for the third unit. So third PK, there's a minus two. And then the third three man is a minus three. But hopefully they're not on the ice too often. Now, in terms of the AHL team, still looking for our first Calder Cup. And I mean, the first line, Height, Turcotte, Aginla is solid. Got Gord there in the AHL. Shamel's up to an 80 now. Like, honestly, a lot of guys are starting to push through defensively even. Pretty much all high 70s. And then goalies here. Whitehead's an 84. That's what I mean. Like Daigle, him, even Vinny, 81. Probably move one, if not two of these guys at the deadline. I'm trying to think. Do we have a third? Yeah. Ivankovic there's a 76. So we can afford to move at least one goalie. Whitehead's probably the guy. Although, I don't know. He signed 850k for the next three years. Could move Wallstedt and have him and Daigle as our two goalies. Maybe that's a move we make this summer though instead. You know, wait and see how they guys do this season. But as you guys can see, we are pretty stacked. So before I get started with the sim, I'll show our ratings. We got 100 offense, 92 defense, 89 goaltending. Quick news, of course, is now our highest rated player. Let's see what happens this season. Also, too, guys, in terms of contract extensions, we got 8.5 million cap space right now. Rossi needs a new contract. He, of course, has been playing really well. He's playing 1C, probably going to perform. He wants $10 million. Oh my goodness. I don't know. We have Hagen's coming up. Rossi, he is a pending RFA, so we'd still have his rights, which is nice. We might have to move him. Demidov wants $10 million. Uh, we have 8.5 million right now. How much is our extension dollars? We only have 10 million, so literally could only sign one of them unless we did trade away Chikrin. Willander here wants 800k. Okay, even playing bottom pair, that's still a steal. We only need him for three more years. 1.2. I mean, might as well try and get him locked up. Cost an extra 400k, but I would really help us out in that final year. I'll give him actually an extra... I mean, you know what? Usually beginning of the season, you can get them a bit cheaper. 85% rule and whatnot. Goalies there are locked up. So yeah, either we get rid of Chikrin or we lose one of Rossi Demidov. I'm not really sure which way to go yet. They're both asking for 10 million. I don't really think the price is going to go up from there. So we'll just, you know, hold off and wait and see what makes the most sense for us. And there we go, guys. Blander said yes to that contract offer. So three years, 1.2 million. That's like an insane bridge deal. And it's kind of funny, guys. Kuzmenko apparently is back on the Vancouver Canucks. Being offered to us with a third and a fourth for Tapper, who's a medium lead prospect. Obviously, we don't even have room for Kuzmenko, so I'm gonna hold on to my guy. And now Carolina is offering us Kuznetsov here. Two years left, four million for Misa and Healy. Again, not a bad offer. We just don't really have any spot for the guy. Right now, our team is vastly underperforming. Bjorkshine and Monaghan there. I'm gonna say no. They want the high league goalie. As you guys can see, we're 500 through November, which I think this team last year at this time was first in division. Hopefully, we can uh, start to turn around. As I say that, we got a three game win streak. Four game, five game win streak against the Jets there. JT Comfort will say no. 
Can we make it six for the Leafs? We do, but then the Blue Jackets there and the streak. All right, guys, we're in December now. The record are 20, 12, and two. Luckily, our December was insane. Uh, we only lost three games, it looks like. So yeah, not too bad. We're currently fourth place in the division. We're actually, you know, almost tied there for the third spot with the Stars. AHL team, 11, 12, and four. They have a negative record. AHL team, I thought looked pretty good as well. Turk got the over point per game. That is nice to see. Maybe we can make the jump to NHL. Kaprizov, over a point per game right now. So he's actually playing well. I'm not sure what the issue is. I'll take a look at the team stats and see if we can find something. One kind of interesting thing here, guys. Quinn Hughes is a plus 12, and he's playing on the top pair with Brock Faber, who's a minus 3. So they should be on the ice more or less the same amount, because obviously special teams is in effect plus minus. I don't really know what's going on there. Goaltending. Wallstead's below 900. Okay. Daigle, 904-279. Is this, is this the time to trade away Jesper Wallstead? Interesting. Um, I mean, we've had a good, pretty good December. I'm going to give him one more month. I'm not going to wait all the way until the deadline. I want to make sure, you know, we have time if the team does falter. So I'll wait till January 31st and see what his stats are like. All right, guys, so end of January now. We're still in a wild card spot. We had a six-game losing streak here, though. So I don't know. I feel like the team is not playing as good as they should be based on how good they are on paper. Kaprizov especially, like having his best season yet of the Sim. And the team is not following suit. So take one look here at Wallstedt. Still below 900. I mean, Daigle as well. So if both goalies are, like, is it because they don't like the fact that, you know, they have another good goalie there? Is it the defense? The only one with a bad plus minus is Brock Faber. I don't really see a glaring issue. I think maybe it's just unlucky. So we'll hold uh, steady here till the deadline and see where we're at. And so we're at the deadline now here, guys. The record of 33, 25, and two. Still in a wild card spot there. Five points back of a divisional. Oh, we got a bit of a lead there on the Oilers. So we should make the playoffs, but obviously nothing guaranteed in this spot. And Kaprizov there slowly being scored. Now slowly under a point per game. AHL wise is Turcotte again. Also just under a point per game. The AHL team there playing for the last playoff spot. They're currently one back of the Griffins. So yeah, like I said, I don't really know. We'll be a conservative buyer. I'm not really sure what the issue is with the team right now. On paper, they should be having their best year yet, I think. And obviously, it hasn't been the case. Noah Dobson's available. Morrissey, both one year left. Sam Therensky, definitely the year to add a defenseman. But obviously, we just added Quinn Hughes, so we're good. Hurdle there. Shea Theodore, Hannafin, Pesci, Pareko, Nelson, John Jersey. So yeah, tons of defensemen available. I don't know. I feel like the team is pretty good. Again, the plus minus not showing any issues really it's just the goaltending and we have so many so it's like you know who do we go with wall sets the highest rate he's got an 892 daigle's got an 897 so it's very very slightly better stenberg being offered to us by the ducks for turk on a third we'll take a look here and see what his stats are like 76 medium top six the playmaker with really good passing turcott's 27 he's done growing he's 82 playmaker i mean he's basically just an ahl superstar stenberg though has also got over a point per game in the AHL. He's got 40 assists. We got a 20-year-old there instead of a 27-year-old for a third-round pick. I think we got to, yeah, say yes to that trade. And now Whitehead here, the AHL starting goal, he's got a 901, which, I mean, he's 84 overall. Should probably have better than a 901 in the AHL. So, yes, Vinny's the best one, 914. He was the guy I was thinking I might trade. So, very interesting situation to be in here. I think we got to move a goalie to get some value. And, like, we're all underperforming except for the guy I was originally going to trade. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now complete. Honestly, I just couldn't find anything else that made sense. Like, looking for a deal for Walsh, I think that's a summer trade. So, like I said, the team's kind of set. I just, I don't know. I couldn't find anything that made sense. We weren't just making a trade to make a trade. So, going through the rest of the moves here, um, nothing crazy. Alex Wenberg to the Stars, Fairberry to the Panthers, Marchenko there to the Canucks, Payne Krebs goes to the Kraken, Callum Ritchie to the Capitals. Oscar Sunkfist returns to the Red Wings. Beckett's next a pretty good prospect right now. He's going to the Jets. Thomas Novak to the Islanders. Adam Pellick to the Predators. That's big. Slavin to the Devils. That's a big time ad for them as well. Uh, Turcotte, of course. We trade to the Ducks. You got Jacob Pelletier there to the Kraken. So really overall, I'd say not a crazy deadline. Maybe a lot of other teams just, you know, didn't have the cap space. Their kind of team was set like ours. So, all right, guys. So after the trade deadline, obviously the NHL team's the same. I did switch a few things up. Power play. We got Higgins on it now. I figured... You know, the team could be performing better. Let's mix it up. Lecker Mackey's now the trigger man on the second power play. So we'll see how that works. AHL wise, trade away Turcotte. So the first line is now Height, Stromel, and Gimla. So it looks pretty good. Steinberg, we just got. He's on the second line. And I mean, he's got a over point per game right now. Could probably put him on the first line, honestly. But I think, you know, Stromel's probably earned it 80 overall. So hopefully. AHL team, NHL team, both get into the playoffs here in the last month and a half. All right, guys, for the end of season now, the record of 44, 35, and 3. Luckily, got into the playoffs there with a wild card spot, 91 points. So, 
I think first round we'll be playing the Golden Knights, which I don't think is a terrible matchup because we actually had more points than the Golden Knights did. We finished first in the Pacific. Shows you how much better the Central is. Also, too, I was a little worried here. I think we lost five straight uh, beginning of April. Luckily, one four straight after that to make sure we held on to our playoff spot. AHL-wise, just, or I guess not just missed. They missed the playoffs there by 10 points. I really thought the HL team was kind of nice this year, but apparently not. Aginla, close two point per game. We'll see if he can make the NHL team. If not, probably trade him. Kaprizov, 75 points. I think that's actually his best year yet with us in this sim because, as I mentioned, had not had a point per game yet. So I'm curious, was this his best year yet? No, okay, second year at 79. So 75, still his second best. His best plus minus by far, plus 27. So still want him to kind of pop off. Rossi, 69. Pretty nice, I'd say, for the first line center. Boldy, 65. Same with Quinn Hughes. So he did well. You know, can't ask for much more than that. 50 assists. Cousin Dino was close to 60, Hagen 54, Lecker Mac 51. Second line there actually ended up being uh, negative, so maybe we'll switch that up for you know next season. Demidov as well, minus 15. He had only 39. Same with Faber. Eisman. I mean, Faber 39, not playing power play too, is pretty good. Hudson there, only 34. Offensive defenseman, he's on the second power play, second unit. We'll see if we can get him producing more. Chicken 30. Overall, Eric Sinek maybe could have had a bit more points, but you know, not too bad. Goaltending, so this is the big kind of issue. Wallstead below 900. I believe this is his worst season yet for us. Yeah, every other year was above 900. It might make sense to, you know, hold on to Wallstead and hope this is just an off year. AHL wise, Whitehead there actually ended up finishing with 900 save percentage right on. And Vinny there was actually a little bit above 900. Again, led the team in scoring, followed by Height. Stenberg there, 59 points. Again, 20 years old. I think this guy could be a player. Like, it looks to be pretty solid. Stramel is close to 50. Lorenz, 44. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to, I think, with this team, even though, like I said, a down year. Luckily, team's young, plus we still have a lot of, you know, upcoming prospects. Entire league, McKinnon led in scoring 105, followed by Marner there, McTavid, Matthews. Looking at scoring this year, I feel like we might have to turn the same scoring up to high, because, like, guys are just not producing as much as they are in real life. You know, so many players with that, like, 120-point mark. Um, Overall, though, like, it's not too far off, I guess. Goal-wise here, McDavid and McKinnon tied 57, actually beat up Matthews and Nylander there by one. Defensive scoring, you got McCarr 96, Nikisha in 72. He's been a beast for the Hurricanes, up to a 92 now. And then Quinn Hughes there is third. So yeah, I definitely think he was worth the money we paid him. In terms of goaltender stats, Yorkiev again, most wins. I think it's just because Colorado is always such a good team. He's at the top of that category. Goals against, that was actually the worst. The best is Devin Levi, 2.53. And I skipped over save percentage here. It's also Devin Levi, 918. He had 42 wins. I think Devin Levi should be a lock there for the Vesna. And then in terms of rookie scoring, Birdchild, 61 points. Higgins was third of 54, so probably no Calder. Michael Misa there, 58 with a minus 21. Yeah, I think it's going to be Mikey Birdchild, the same those Blues. He was the third overall pick, 2026. Higgins, though, still would probably be, you know, in the voting, I'd say. And then Cole Eiserman here, not even on the first page. I mean, you know, him playing third line definitely hurt him. But luckily, he's 21 and young, so I think he can get going. Hopefully, too, shoots the puck a bit more. Only eight goals there. And yeah, 163 shots. Uh, definitely need him shooting more. And I look at the entire league here, guys. You get the Maple Leafs winning the President's Trophy, 107 points. We finished, where did we finish? Wow, Florida, Boston, 11 and 12 in the league. They missed. We finished 14th. And then, like, the Pacific, Arizona there, I'm guessing, is a bottom team to get in, 18, only 86 points. Kind of crazy. Last in the NHLs, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they could get another first overall pick to go with Gad McKenna and the made up dude. They got goals four there. The Maple Leafs are first. Bruins are fourth. They don't get in. That is tough to see. And then goals against it. The Buffalo Sabres were the best. We're not at the top of the page. We're also we're at the bottom. So yeah, we're just got a very, you know, mediocre team this year. But still, once you're in the playoffs, anything can happen. As I mentioned, I believe we're playing Vegas Golden Knights here in the first round. I think we definitely, you know, can beat them. So take a look at that roster. First line, let's look at Thomas Hurdle on the team. They got this Jacob Sherov guy. Who was he? First overall pick, 2024 made up. He went above Celebrini. Jack Eichel on the right wing. Got March so still there. Brendan Brassad's up to an 87. Good for him. Barbashev, you got Chernyshov, Aku Ratu, that's Atu's brother. I mean, the bottom six is pretty meh. Defensively, they're not as good as us, not even close. So our team's way better on paper. Like, we have better defense, better bottom six. We have a better goalie. That's actually funny. We're playing Augustus in there, so he's going to want some revenge. But on paper, our team's a lot better. And I guess, you know what? In real life, we were better too. We actually had one more point. It's just the fact that Vegas plays the Pacific. So we'll see what happens here, guys. Vegas will have home ice advantage as the division winner. And we lose the first game, win the second. I'll take a one and one, head home to Minnesota. Game three is a win. Let's go. Game four is a loss. Okay, so 2-2, two, two, head back to Vegas. 4-3 OT win, that's big. Game six is a loss. Game seven's an OT loss. Are you kidding me? 
We had to win one of the last two, and unfortunately, both are one goal losses. Actually, every single one of these games in this series was a one goal game. That is nuts. So, super, super close, unfortunately. First round exit again. AHL team, of course, did not make the playoffs. So, a definitely disappointing season when I really thought we were destined for the Stanley Cup. Just so many good players on entry-level deals, and it wasn't meant to be. And so the playoffs are now complete, guys, and the Buffalo Sabres there won the Stanley Cup, and the Cleveland Monsters won the Calder Cup. So, again, I'm a very, very disappointing season. Nashville jumps from 7-1, to one, Washington 8-2, to two, and then Pittsburgh there at 3. But still, uh, Pittsburgh's definitely going to have a pretty deadly core here in the future. All these top picks. Rossi in the playoffs, 6 points in 7 games. Obviously got some big decisions to make around him. Demidov, goaltending situation. Speaking of Demidov, he had 5 points. So the two guys that want new deals... Both perform. Devadov as well has got a few more X Factors now. He's got the Born Leader X Factor as well. Always curious how they get that. Uh, he's got 94 poise. I think it's just like the poise stat, maybe discipline as well. So looking at the team, underperformers in the playoffs. Favor there only having one point. You definitely want to see more than that. Even Hudson with two, but they are defensemen, so kind of tough to knock them. Goaltending. Wallstead did pretty well. 926, 2.6. Jeez, yeah, we just got tough decisions to make. Hopefully make the right ones. Sabres beat the Sanders in five, swept the Leafs the second round, Rangers in six, and then the Avs there in five. And Stanley Cup final, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, Middlestad and Byron are both still on the team. They'd be going against their old teams in the Stanley Cup final. Sabres, of course, won last year, so that's actually back-to-back -back Stanley Cups for them. Quite impressive. Individual awards, McKinnon, Art Ross back-to-back -back years. Also got the Hart back-to-back. McCarr's fifth straight, James Norris. Absolute cheat code in this game. Wow, the cover boy is just too dominant. Lady Bang, though, goes to Marner. You got Birdchild there getting a Calder. Owen Power, Con Smythe, Devin Levi, as we predicted, got the Vesna, also won the William Jennings. Thrun there, Bill Masterton, Arizona coach Jack Adams. Byfield got the Selkie. McKinnon back to back, Ted Lindsay, and then McDavid there with the Marisha Shard. Also, McKinnon won it. So, yeah, huge year for Colorado and Buffalo, respectively. AHL wise, as we mentioned, Cleveland Monsters called their cup. We didn't make the playoffs, so no team awards for us. Uh, Kling sell most points. Just looking to see if anyone I recognize. Cataford, uh, most goals. You got Gavin there, best rookie. Surprised he's just now playing the AHL. Lukanen, best goalie. I'm surprised he's down there. Interesting. Alex Zetterberg, sportsmanship. He's still in the AHL as it broke through the NHL. Lukanen also lowest goals against. He's actually been playing really well for the Sabres in real life. But we'll get to the draft here, guys. Retired players again. We'll see. I don't know. We'll have to decide what to do. You know what? I should take a look and see what Rossi Demidov are asking for because that'll definitely kind of impact my decision on them. Rossi's dropped in rating, it looks like. Demidov, he now wants $9 million still, only $1 million less. Rossi's down to 86, and he still wants almost 10 million. So I don't really know. We gotta trade away one of these guys because it just doesn't make sense to keep them both. Even Schaefer, 85 on the bottom pair. He probably wants to push through. And check this out, guys. Ludwig Soderstrom here, 77 overall, lowly potential. Was a fourth round pick by us in 2026. All of a sudden, he's 77 overall. He was a lot lower rated, so he's a guy that actually could push for an NHL spot pretty soon. And next year, guys, we're looking at retired players. <laughs> that one just looks wrong. Crosby retires to the Florida Panthers. Are you kidding me? Patty Kane was a free agent, down to 74. Uh, let's see, Claude Giroux there retires with the Senators. Jamie Benn on the Ducks. Zuccarello with the Canucks, very interesting. True Doughty with the Rangers. Petrangelo was with the Canucks as well. So a big retirement class, obviously. Uh, no one bigger, though, than Crosby. Take the goalies here. You got Jonathan Quick, Cam Talbot. And so next year, guys, we're entering the NHL entry draft. Curious to see, you know, who's available. Obviously, 2028, I think it's just all made-up players at this point. I do have... Both draft class quality and uh, prospect quality at medium. Medium. Bobby Berard here uh, from the Calgary Hitman. Medium franchise. Going to go number one. You got a bunch of medium leads behind him. Take a look here at the gems. Okay, so we got a goalie. Not really sure. I, I doubt he's high back if he's going to be an early second. Landis Cog, gem, fourth rounder, maybe even fifth. Okay, you got another goalie there, like second rounder. Scouts are always able to find the goalies, that's for sure. Sorted by potential here. Any guaranteed medium leads? You got an American goalie, 58. So we definitely have our pick in terms of that uh lane here good chance to be medium lead late first rounder we still have our first round pick so much style shea weber okay here's a couple more goalies that could be elites that can be like fifth round picks look at this guy angelo bataglia guarantee medium top four gonna be like a fifth rounder that is a steal and now look at this guys i was checking out the team and james Higgins now has franchise potential up from high elite 88 overall that is awesome he's just finished his rookie season so i don't know how he grew to franchise, but apparently uh, Liam seen the AHL a couple years must have paid off. And so obviously with him having that potential, he's our new 1C, which is why, I mean, do we need Rossi still making $10 million as a second line center? Could have Cousin Dinov move back to the middle. 
Erickson Eck on the third line. Just very good two-way. All right, guys. So I'm trying to make a massive deal right now. It's Philadelphia Flyers to get Matt Vimichka. Four years left, 8.5. Pretty reasonable. 91 overall. 80 points last season. Great sniper. Basically an upgrade on Demidov. He's actually going to ask for more money. 87 overall does not produce as much. Now, this is probably getting as much ice time. Cousin Yam as well. It was minus 10 last year. I think Rossi might just be a bit more versatile. Also throwing on Clarkson as a high elite goalie. This is a massive offer I feel like we're giving to Philadelphia. Mick Isaac there is just there for the roster spot. Values on our side by a little bit. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. Okay. All right, guys. So next time we're trying to make a trade to Winnipeg Jets. We got Velarde on the block. Six years left at 5.5. Pretty reasonable, I think. Power forward. Could be good on the second line. Could play center. Could play wing. I'm offering up because of Dinov. He was minus 10 last year. I think one of our, you know, most negative forwards. I might keep Rossi over him just because I think... Uh, Rossi a bit more versatile, has a better shot, pretty similar defensive stats. Also offering up Whitehead here, he's kind of like our extra goalie. Cougar good to be the AHL star, not good enough to be the NHL backup. Let's we'll see what the Jets say to this offer. Trades rejected, interesting. I mean, I want to do this too because we're saving a few million dollars in cap space there, which could end up, you know, being a big deal for us. I like a lot of the picks we have this year. Maybe, now we do have a lot of extra prospects. I don't know, like, how much more they want. Could throw in Keen, medium top six. It seems like very fair. And yeah, Winnipeg Jets say yes. And now next we're going to try to make another big time trade. This one's with the St. Louis Blues to get Robert Thomas. I'm offering up Marco Rossi. I feel like, you know, Thomas is just a better version. Has higher passing stat. Also, Lecker Mackey, five years left, 4.4. He's down to 85 overall. So he's like a third line guy. We've got a lot of young players pushing up. We'll still have, you know, the duo on the fourth line, Aus Oslin and Ogren. But if we can get Robert Thomas, I think it's worth it. The value's on our side. Trades rejected. I feel like it's got to be close, though. And now St. Louis is interested in Clarkson, who's the high league goalie. I mean, we have Dago, Wallstedt, Vinny, Ivankovic. The only thing is, that's a lot to give up, I think, for Robert Thomas. Although, again, he's just a very, very good playmaking center. 97 passing there. I feel like we got a lot of good snipers on the team. We could feed them the puck. This is probably a bit of an overpayment, but I don't know. Maybe if we do this, we should get back, like, a second-round pick to hopefully get another... Um, elite goalie will take, you know, the Vancouver pick there that's later. Let's see what the Blues say to this. Trades rejected. All right, no pick. Come on. Trades accepted. All right, so a huge offer there. Hopefully one that makes our team better. I was just kind of looking at it. Honestly, Tidge again, I want to give a chance on this team just because his shot is so good. I feel like if he grows a bit this summer, playing third line, look at that shot with some good players really be a uh, solid forward for us and i just in our pick here guys number 19 we'll see who's available there was that one guy yeah lane who's got a good chance to be medium elite Derek lane from saginaw shea weber i mean i think he's the guy to take hopefully it's the right pick and 63 medium top four all right so you know for that spot it's about what you'd expect highly goalie there to the kraken at number 13 shows you how good of a steal it was the guy we got like in the third round I think the medium elites there were just the top five picks. So kind of crazy, even medium, medium. Uh, the draft doesn't look to be as good as we had in the past. And look at this, guys. Arizona just got Carlotti. Two picks before us, 53 medium elites. So hopefully we can get somebody really solid here at number 51. And so after trading away that goalie, guys, the next highest ranked guy we actually have is a medium elite goalie here, Estrada. Not a high elite, but medium elite, 48 overall. Second round, that's not too bad. And with our third round pick here, guys, we could take Ninamaki, who's a gem, but guaranteed low top six. Honestly, I'd rather just risk it, try and find somebody better. Now, we really don't need a 79th pick or even the 83rd. So I'm going to try and get a 4th and a 5th this year, plus a 4th next year from the Panthers. Just add a pick here. They say no, just a bit low. Okay, maybe a future 5th. Again, like, um, there's no one to take. We can just add a pick here. They're still saying just a bit low. Again, like, that's, I think, pretty fair value. 4, 5, 6 now for 2 thirds. They say yes. So... Like I said, just at the spot we were, I didn't really need to make a pick. Panthers, they can actually go back to back. So uh, in the fourth round now, as I mentioned, you got like five guys pinned. So the next to go would be, I guess, Landis Cog, who could be anything, but uh, he's the highest ranked there, 125. He's a gem. Let's see. He's a 62 low top six. All right, I'm still hoping for a little bit better, but obviously you never know. Early fifth round pick. Now I'm going to take another goalie. Caprivo is supposed to be medium elite, and he is medium elite, 48 overall, so making up for all those goalies we trade away. And our next pick here, guys, 147. We're going to take Bataglia, who actually is ranked 147 right on. 40 to overall, but medium top four defenseman in the fifth round. Super good value. And our sixth round pick here, guys, we're going to take a guy, Dumont. Uh, could be medium elite and a medium bottom six. All right. And our last pick in the draft here could honestly go for, like, anybody. Antoine Benoit here. Good chance to be low top six. Angelique TA, four years. Take a chance on him in the seventh. And he's a low bomb six grinder. All right. So... 
wasn't the best pick there. But overall, I think, you know, pretty decent draft. Again, I like the trades we made. I feel like we upgraded. Uh, we had, obviously, a ton of, like, extras we need to move on from. And I think we got guys back with good contracts. Hopefully, we'll be good fits. And so we're at the resign phase here with 11.5 million in cap space. And again, the only guy we actually have to resign is Demidov. So, gonna be enough for him. We'll qualify for sure. He's asking for 6.5. He's actually dropped his ass. Three years is 6.8. Okay, let's do, I mean, 87. 6.5 for three years. We'd have 5 million bucks to work with, whether it be um, trade deadline, whatever it is. I think, you know, team's pretty much filled out. Riley Hype there, two years, 800k is also a steal. Ramel here, 800k as well, that's awesome. And now looking at our other positions here, guys, we don't have any money to re-sign, like the top six defense still intact. Now we do have a lot of prospects getting signed, Galchenyuk, Sinistin, if you guys remember, we drafted both of them in the same draft, 2026 there, second round for both. So those guys could end up being future NHLers. You also got Sarsham I was mentioning. Goalies, we still got Wallstead, Daigle under contract. Daigle could beat out Wallstead for the starting job if he grows. And then, I don't know, <laughs> at that point we probably do trade Wallstead, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, Vinny Ivankovic, I think it's a great AHL duo. And there we go, Demidov said yes to that three-year deal, six and a half million. I think that was awesome. And like I said, I think the only NHL player we had to resign, everybody else just AHL deals. And that leaves us with 5.7 million in cap space. And so it's now time for free agency, guys. Again, our team's set, but always curious to see what's available. Sider, 91 overall, free agent. I mean, we got Faber on the right side, so we should be good. Levchinov's an RFA, you got Morgan Frost. Let's sort this by ratings. You got Pelche there, Morrissey, Pelic. Interesting. So a lot of guys available, but no one like really a superstar, which is kind of what this team needs. I think we definitely have more than enough depth. Uh, Vasilevsky, 86 overall. I feel like he probably plays better than that. Actually, last year he had below 900, so maybe take it back. 99 boys there. Obviously, he's a great playoff goalie. Interesting. If we needed a goalie, he definitely would have been a great option. Trey Augustine, 85 overall, wants entry level. I mean, what? Spencer Knight, 84 overall, wants 800k. Jeez, should we... Do I look to potentially sign Knight here? And then trade Wallstead. Right here, guys, I'm offering Augustine 1.6 for two years. This is literally just so Detroit doesn't get him for 800k. Or we do, and in which case, that's pretty awesome. And then Spencer Knight, like, we could have him and Daigle making no money. Like, what a duo that would be. And then we could also have 10 million in cap space. We could almost go after Cider. You'd actually sign Spencer Knight three years for, like, 1.2 million. I'm going to offer him that. If he says yes, <laughs> definitely... Give us some options at goalie. Like, I don't know. I doubt you will, but we'll see. Um, prospect goalies, 1955 medium starter. I mean, we can get him for free. Honestly, I'm not going to sign him just because I don't think we'll have no goalie spots if I do. And now skaters, we got a couple low elites. Definitely take both these guys for free. Obviously, as low elite, you know, suggests once in a while, one of them will just randomly grow, and it's great to have them for free. Also, Francesco Pinelli, 79. I mean, not bad. Medium top six. Get him locked up. This guy here, Kasparitis, 2060, low top four. Lawson we'll awesome gave him an offer. And look at the goalie range right now, guys. Daigle's already 86 overall, so I do think he's going to pass Wallstead, at which point I don't really know why we'd have him, you know, making almost $5 million as the backup. So hopefully Knight says yes. We'll see what we can do here with Wallstead. And like I was saying, if we could potentially trade him with Chikrin, that frees up $13 million. We could get Cider, still have $5 million in cap space. Definitely want to trade these two guys to the East, though, because wherever they go, they're making that team much better. Could trade him to Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, they're definitely making something happen. They got JJ Moser there as their number one. They got McKenna, Bataglia. Where's like their third overall pick? This Tyrone Canone guy. Not honestly that good with third overall compared to the other two players. I'm going to see if they'll give us their 2029 first. That's unprotected. Imagine that ends up being first overall. Wallstead and Chikrin. They say no. I mean, fair enough. Now the Capitals just picked two. Would they give up a first round pick uh, for those two guys? They also say no. I didn't want to sell to a Western team, but maybe Arizona says yes. And they do. Wow, okay, so let's go. They wanted both guys. They're a seller. Thing is, obviously, Pacific's not that great. They got some players. We just got to hope, you know, they don't make the playoffs. And that's kind of funny, too. Chicken returns to Arizona. That's so like I was saying, guys. We now have 17 million in cap space, so we can definitely go and get Cider. He wants six. We'll give him the years he wants. Philly's also interested. We'll do, I don't know. We'll do 13 million. That's probably enough. Overpay by a million bucks. And we still have 4 million there for the cap space this year. Obviously, um, Hagen's Irishman will have, you know, contracts that got to get paid. But we'll worry about that in the future. That's, you know, future tactics problems. All right, guys. So, Casparetti said yes. He was the low top four defenseman. Barkov as well. One of the low elites. Vermette, I think, was also a low elite. Uh, Clem there. I got a few scouts there. We're all A overall. And Spencer Knight says yes. So, again, 80 for overall goalie. Making, like, 1.2 mil or whatever it was the next three years. is insane. Backing up Daigle. Pinelli there said yes. 
We can hear back from Cider though, that's the main thing. A medium league goalie for two thirds. Uh, I'm gonna say no to that from the Flyers. Hopefully Cider says yes, okay he does. I was gonna say, if not, we gave away Wallstedt and Chikrin for basically nothing. Uh, Augustine accepted as of now. Again, I was just kind of trying to screw over Eisenman. Uh, wait, they didn't match? <laughs> of course, of course. I was literally just doing that to keep them on. It's not getting 85 goalie at 800k. And then the Red Wings don't match. You know what? This might be another one of like the uh, the stupid tax. I don't know what Eisenman's thinking over there. So I will give him Augustine for a seventh round pick. They got Kosa, but like, why would you not, you know, keep this guy as well? So yeah, giving Eisenman Augustine back just to... What? Alfred Augustine, the Red Wings for a seventh, and they said no. What? Okay. They said they're saving money to re-sign players. Look at the value difference. Wow. I mean, at that point, our goalies are Daigle Augustine, since Eisman doesn't want him. Spencer Knight was like an insurance option. We can just trade him. We'll have Vinny Ivankovic in the AHL. Now, the Ducks want him. They don't have any good goalies. What I'm thinking is, I'm trying to make, like, other Pacific teams better, since, you know, we want Arizona to be bad, so... Uh, we could get our third round pick back. I feel like the Ducks, though, will be better than us. Wow, Knight has a ton of value, so I do feel a little bit scummy trading him here as soon as we signed him, but uh, we just don't need him. Augustine, of course, I did not expect to sign, so uh, the Ducks there give us a second. All right, guys, so let's start next season. I'll show you what the team is looking like. I said this last episode, I don't. I feel like this team should be a cup contender. I feel like there's not much more we could add, so the first line, you got Kaprizov, Robert Thomas, Matthew Boley. I'm hoping... Uh, this is finally going to work for Kaprizov, really, you know, make him perform. He's got the playmaker, he's got the power forward, the plus five chem boost. We'll see what happens. The second line is actually the kind of old AHL goat line. Eisenman, Higgins, Demidov, hopefully they do well for us. Third line is Velarde, Eric Sinek, and Aginla, as I mentioned. Wanted him to get some NHL time. There's such a good shot. We'll see how he does there. Eric Sinek, unfortunately, lost a bunch of X-Factors. Only kept tape to tape. I personally wish he kept, like, a defensive one because he's more of a, you know, PK guy for us, but... I see his defensive awareness has actually kind of gone down as well. Fourth line here is a bit different now. we got Yurov, Stramel, and Oslin. So Stramel is probably the best of the three. Power forward there, solid defensively and physically. Just kind of will do it all there. And looking at the defense next year, you got Quinn Hughes and Moritz Sider. I think I've had this top pair before. And obviously it's pretty nasty. Tough to get a better top pair than that. You got Schaefer, Faber on the second pair with Lander and Hudson on the bottom. And then goaltending here, we got Daigle starting with Augustine backing him up. And now for the HL team here, guys, we got Riley Heiss, 82, so he's going to be leading the team. You got Stenberg, again, was really good in the HL last year. Ogre and I draw. Now, the reason I took him out the fourth line is the fact he's only got 74D awareness. Physical is good, but I feel like defensive awareness is probably the most important thing for that fourth line. The rest of the HL forwards, you got Luke Misa there. You got Hunter Height. I think, like, you know, most of them are high in the high 70s. Defensively, Starstrom's the Lolita I was talking about now, 79. Second pairing here is actually the guys that got drafted basically back-to-back. Sinitsin there and Galchenyuk works out really well because Galchenyuk's left-handed offensive defenseman, Sinitsin right-handed defensive defenseman should be a perfect pairing. You can see the entire HLD course high 70s. Goalie Vinny's an 82 starter. Vonka there's an 80 backup. If this HL team can't make the playoffs, I'm not really sure what their issue is, but I feel like you know they got good coaches as well. So we'll see what happens. Excited for next year. Show you guys the ratings here before we end the episode. Obviously, too, uh, Hagen's and Eiserman both need new contracts, so we'll probably have to make some more moves to make them fit, but. For right now, we got 100 offense, 93 defense, 89 goaltending. Hopefully, that's good enough to make a Stanley Cup run. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.